Okay, Kindle Fire, first gen, broken screen. The it was shattered, so we just pried it off. It's just glue around here, here, and here. They come off fairly easy. Don't stick it in too far because you'll crack the lens or the LCD. You just want to be just under far enough to pull it up. And what you can do is you can use rubbing alcohol and just dip the end of it and push. And dip, dip it again, and your rubbing alcohol will help to soften up the glue and it'll keep it from sticking so it's not jamming as you're going. Now to pry the back off, it's already been done, but stick it in here about halfway down and you want to pry up gently like this and it'll pop it off of these little hooks. There's hooks all along the sides. And the hardest part is getting it around here. So what I do is I go down this side and then I go down this side you probably have to stick your fingernail in there or something in here to keep it from popping back down because it will do that. And then I do around the speakers, I'll stick in here and pry up just to get this loosened off. That'll release this. And then the last part you want to do is around here, which is really tricky because you don't want to break these. Pry up, pop these out, and then this thing will just open right up. Like that. Okay, now to get the battery off, I've already pulled the battery connection out, but normally you don't do that. Let's say this has already been put in and it's plugged in. What you want to do is you want to get your pry bar right underneath the corner and lift up very gently so you don't damage the battery because they glue the ever living piss out of underneath here so it doesn't move. So you pull this up a little bit and you just keep working your way along. Once again, you can use rubbing alcohol to help keep it from sticking because it does get very sticky. So once you get down this corner, there's just a small strip of glue down this one side. In order to get the glue out from down here, you want to use your rubbing alcohol and you want to push through the glue, kind of like you're cutting it. And then that'll open this up. And there's more glue down here. Use a little bit of rubbing alcohol and just kind of go like this. And that'll open it enough that you can peel it out. As you can see, there's a lot of glue here some here and some here. This is extremely hard to get out right here and that's right in this area over here right in here so what you want to do is you want to kind of push this through the glue and it does quite cut quite easily to come out. Now because I've taken the digitizer off already it's just this little clip here you just pop this up very gently and it pops out. There's uh, two screws holding it down. You want to take a very, very small screwdriver, a very good quality one, because otherwise they'll strip the screwdriver, because the screws are actually quite good. Undo the screws, take this piece out of the way, and it's garbage at this point because the digitizer's broke anyway. Next thing you want to do is pop this up. And there's another one over here, which is supposed to be connected to a light ambient sensor, but they don't even use it. They've, they change the programming so this doesn't do anything anyways but it's on there pop it up and just pull the tab out so it's out of the way remove the six screws with your screwdriver like that and then there's a heat shield here this is very sticky stuff you want to peel this back and get it off of the GPU I believe it is we'll just move that into here and then you want to take two fingernails onto this speaker connector and very gently pry it out like that move it out of the way and then you've got your Wi-Fi take your pry bar and just pop it up very gently and get it out of the way this thing is a pain in the butt so make sure you got it well out of the way like that next thing is the LCD connector Put your thumb on there to hold it down. Take your other fingernail and stick it underneath the front and pry up very gently so you don't break it. Because what will happen if you don't do it right is it'll actually separate the connector from the ribbon cable and it's racked anyway. So be very careful with it. Now, hold the connector back, stick your pry bar underneath the corner, very gently pry up to separate it from more glue that's underneath here. It's actually a uh, um, silicone transferred stuff to keep the heat out of it. 
lift this up and be careful over here because this will want to always hook the edge. You want to lift it high enough that it's out of there like that. Make sure this thing is disconnected here and you just pull it out very gently. If you still have the port in here, this one doesn't, that's why it's broke. You could just stick it down in here and just pry this piece of plastic back and kind of pry it out. It'll pop out fairly easy. And then your motherboard's out. Okay, there's your broken port. There should be five... What can you... Okay, there should be five little copper, or copper, five little pieces of, of solder in here. If you don't have five, chances are when a port broke, it tore off the copper connector, in which case you're screwed anyways, because you need all five of them in order to connect to the computer. If you don't care if it connects to the computer, and you have the outside two, you could still re-solder this, and it'll charge your battery, and it can work properly. It just won't be able to connect to the computer, that's all. But whatever. Now there's solder in the back. You'll have to solder this up and use a suction thing to get rid of it. I have one of those here somewhere. So. Here's the suction plunger. These are cheap. They're a couple of bucks. Push that down. Push the button. It sucks the solder out. So what you want to do, take your soldering iron where the port is. All I do is I hold it here push this through the little solder hole until it's stuck in there and then stand it up with this stuck in the hole I'm not going to do it now because I'm not going to do this while it's hot put that like this you have your soldering iron stuck through the hole you just hold it over like that you push the button it sucks the solder out and then these little holes here will be clean so you can put a new port in there if you don't have the solder out of there, you'll never get the port in there, or it won't sit properly, and it sits a pain in the butt. You want it to be as flat as possible. The port, I don't know if you can see the little tiny connectors in there. There's five of them. They're very small. I can't even see them. My eyes aren't good enough to see them, so I have to use a magnifying glass. You turn it this way, this is the actual side you're going to be working on. It's practically impossible to see what you're doing. So anyways, take a wire brush. This is stainless steel just rub any corrosion or whatever that's on here don't do it too hard just enough to make it shiny turn it over do the same thing on the other side be very gentle that will remove some of the impurities off of it I then take the end of the, the, the handle here and I push down so that I'm actually bending the prongs down towards the motherboard so that when I set this thing on there they actually push down onto the motherboard that way when I re-solder it, they'll kind of set themselves down into the solder because if they're completely flat and you don't get this all the way down, there's going to be a gap under there and with these things being so tiny, it's really, really, really difficult to get a good solder joint otherwise. I find if I just bend these down a little bit, it'll sit better and it, my success rate is probably one or two out of five. Otherwise, it's zero out of five. Here's a new digitizer. They're about ten dollars. They have lots of sticky stuff underneath here, down the edge, and then they've got a peel-up section here to protect the glass on the inside from fingerprints and dust. So if you peel this off, don't touch it. I suggest that you don't peel this off until you're ready to put it on, because it's very easy to get dust underneath there, and it's impossible to get it out once it's back together. So. The outside one, whatever. You could touch this all you want because it's all covered in plastic. Now, this thing here looks a little bit bent. I don't know if this is actually going to work or not, but if it doesn't, I could just send it back because that's how they shipped it to me. Okay, so take a lint fleet, lint free cloth, and you can see that it's pretty dirty because this glass has been off of here for a while. You gotta clean this up, otherwise it'll show through. Don't push so hard that you can break it, but you also gotta push hard enough to get all the oils and stuff, because who, who knows who touched it last. There's probably all sorts of fingerprints and stuff on it. <sighs> A little bit of breath on there. You don't want to put water or anything on there. I don't put rubbing alcohol on here because the rubbing alcohol will actually soak in between the layers of the LCD and that will wreck it.
There, nice and shiny. Blow it off. I use just a $10 air duster thing. So you can do a dozen of these things with the amount of air that's in here. It's just enough to get the stuff off of there. It'll also dry it, and then you can see if there's any spots that you missed. Make it as clean as you can. That way it doesn't show sh little streaks and stuff when you put the put the digitizer over top of it. Now, one thing you got to really watch for is glue along here. There is some glue in here, so I'll have to get rid of it. Sometimes it's hard to see. This one I thought was clean, but it's actually quite a bit of glue in here. Just use your scraper tool. And what you want to do is you don't want to go back and forth like this. You just want to push it in one direction. That way it'll kind of peel it up and it'll move it right along. It's tedious, but the results are pretty good. Try not to scratch the LCD. I don't know, if you go in one direction, it comes off in little balls like that. If you go back and forth, you end up with a whole bunch of little balls and it doesn't actually clean it off the plastic. It just kind of rolls them around. I don't really get too carried away with it because I'm going to be putting more on here anyway. And there is already a gap in here that's designed not to sit right against the LCD. The Google Nexus is actually glued right to the LCD. So if you have to do a repair on one of those, I've done two of them and I will not do another one. It's easier just to spend the money and buy a new Google or spend about $50 US and buy the LCD with the digitizer already assembled and then watch a bunch of YouTube videos on how to take all the screws out of it because there's a pile of screws to get down to this point so the Kindles are actually fairly easy to fix by comparison so if you don't have the patience for it I don't know I think it's probably more expensive just to get them fixed because the shop's going to charge you probably three or four hours at 50 or 60 or whatever dollars an hour it charges. Plus the price of the replacement parts is going to run you another two or three hundred dollars so you're better off just to buy one, start over and then eBay the old one off to somebody like me that could fix it. Although I probably won't buy it because they're too much of a pain in the ass to fix. We're recording five minutes. Okay. Okay, just cleaning off the last of the fingerprints. Make it nice and clean. There. I've used my scraper tool. These are like a dollar. Scrape all the glue off. Now we can start with the digitizer. This connector goes down into this hole here that just fits in there. So, we'll peel off the plastic. These ones are very nice because it's all one piece. Some of them have four pieces and they are pain because the corners always want to stick. But these are very well done. One piece. Check and make sure everything's good. Then there's another piece here for the inside. One piece, and then the inside sheet. Now, now, normally it's nice and clean underneath, but because these are tested before they ship them, they peel it off, or they, they put stuff on it afterwards, but it's always a good idea to clean it anyways, because once you get this on here, you're not going to get the dust out of there. Blow it off blow off again. If your air is perfectly clean you won't get dust on the LCD. If it's like every other house in the world you're gonna get dust back on there within a few minutes so get this thing on there. Put it in there. Put your corner in first.
think I see a couple of fingerprints in there. That's just the plastic on the outside. Oh. Careful of the connector, you don't want to wreck it. You want to stick your corners in first. One right by the connector. Now don't put it all the way down yet. So you need to peel off the outside plastic. It's a pain in the butt if you don't have this plastic off of there because it likes to get caught. Now, put the bottom corner in, bottom corner in, and then carefully push it in to snap it into position. And that's what holds it. It's sticky. Okay, stop. Okay, you got your new digitizer sitting in there, but it's not pushed right down. There's a rubber edge around here which helps to hold it and seat it. So you take your scraper tool and you just gently stick it in there and then you lean it forward and you pull it down and what that will do is it'll raise that rubber bit up and it'll help to seat the new digitizer in there. So it's right down flat. Be very careful when you get near the connector because it will stab through. You just want to get that rubber to sit up enough that that digitizer goes right flat. Do it all the way around. You want to use a little bit of rubbing alcohol on here just to make it slippery. There, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's seated right down now. There. So here's the motherboard we took out. And as you can see, those connections are extremely small. If you actually hold your soldering iron in there, it looks gigantic compared to the little connectors. But that's all we got to work with. So I don't know how they do it from the factory, but it's pretty amazing that they can do a billion of these a day and it seems to be just fine. Make sure on the back side that you have lots of solder here and here to hold this thing in. The reason why a lot of these break is because they got cheap towards the end and they stopped putting solder in here. They stick them in, they soldered the back side, they put a little bit of solder on these, but they didn't solder it very well in here. So what happens is they get loose and then they just break off. So make sure this is soldered to hold this stable. Okay. That's going to beep, isn't it? Nope. Okay, on the back side, there's a little rubber, I don't know what this thing's for, a stabilizer, I guess. If your Kindle's broke when you took it apart, chances are it's still in the Kindle, but this little rubber thing is supposed to stand up right here. And it puts pressure on it when you put the lid on it, but I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. What I do is I put it flat, I use my scraper tool, and I just gently stick it underneath, like that. And that helps to stabilize from the up and down prying motion. If you've got lots of solder in here, chances are this rubber thing isn't going to make any difference. Okay, okay we'll put this back together. It took me about two hours to solder those little prongs on here. Like I said, they get the success rate is probably a one in five. So if you don't get it the first time, oh well. <laughs> it's just they're really difficult to fix. So you want to stick this in first. I just lift this little ribbon up. Put this in first. And then you just put the little locker down. Then you need your scraper tool because you got to lift this LCD connector back up just enough that you can get it passed without hooking it. Set it down in there and then you just pop it in because you have to pop it past the plastic here and then what you'll probably have to do is just gently pry it forward to get it down seated in all the way down like that. Okay, so you got the motherboard down there. Make sure you stick your pry tool down here and push the power button out a little bit so that you know that it actually clicks. You should feel a definite click. 
if it's not seated properly it'll be it'll kind of just stick and stay it should have a nice little spring to it then you put this screw in first to hold everything down and don't put any more screws in it right now and then the connector you gently pop it back in just like that and then your Wi-Fi cable you want to stick that on this is basically a test stage so that's why I don't want to put all the screws in but if you leave this one screw out what will happen is this motherboard will lift up and then the button won't work right so you gotta have it in there this Wi-Fi cable if you've done them before you'll know that they're they're kind of a pain in the butt so what's this doing in there okay go ahead or is it it's already going okay whatever okay make sure all the wires are in you want to root this you want to root this uh, speaker wire around so that it sits flat otherwise it'll hold your cover up because hopefully you don't have to take this out again the little silver connector should be facing up you stick that back in pop it in with your fingernail move it away from the CPU put your heat transfer sponge or whatever you want to call it back on here and that'll hold the wiring in now lift this up be extremely careful with these because if you break them off you're gonna have to find another motherboard to get replacement plastics <laughs> if you're stuck say you break this one off you can take this one out from the back here because this connector doesn't do anything anyways and you can put it in there you need a very small pair of pliers hang on to it stick it in the one side there's extremely small prongs on the inside edge you can feel it when it goes in there and just kind of push it to the side that you've already got in lift it up a little bit turn and pop it in it, if you pop it in too hard you'll break the little tab off the other side and I've done it a hundred times but I have a hundred of these things to play with so it wasn't a big deal this one here you're kind of stuck this one's a different size than these other two so now we want to put the connector for the digitizer in and we'll just stop this because I need to clean this with some emery cloth okay I'm going to put the digitizer in but before you do take I probably shouldn't do it on there I'll do it on this take your Teflon sponge and just gently clean this off because if you've got any kind of grit in there it'll give you a really jumpy uh, inputs there you can see the dirt that came off okay put this in just gently move it in there into position take your pry tool and push it down in there and it'll sit right in there and then you just pop that down there done okay so we got our digitizer in everything is all clicked down there should be a screw in here but I don't know if this is going to work so if this is the only one you're doing you'll want to put that screw in there because if it does work you're good to go now digitizer looks good now here's the magic point you take your battery which should be charged up if it is not charged up hopefully your success on the soldering the outside two prongs is good enough that it will charge your battery because if the battery isn't charged up it won't turn on when you plug it in so you stick this in here plug it in and that little light should come on hooray the little lights on so it should be loading up to Kindle at this point I don't know how charged up this battery is if it is even charged up there's our Kindle it'll take about 20 seconds for that to load up you're going okay I'm just waiting for this to load up sometimes it takes a little longer because if it has been if it's been wiped out and it's doing a reboot it'll uh, have to reload everything if you're doing your own chances are it'll just load up right away 
just trying to take the label off of here. This is glass. It's extremely tough. If you press on it on a weird angle, it will break. But for the most part, pretty good stuff. There's actually two layers to this. They have a layer of glass and another layer of glass, and it's got some kind of microfiber, electro-gizmo-y stuff underneath it, a mesh that picks up the static from your finger somehow, and they glue those two pieces together, so you can actually, you can actually bend this without it breaking, but I don't suggest it if it's your new one, and I don't suggest you do it on one that's already broken, because if any of the glass shards come off, you'll go blind. Okay, so we're up to this. Now hopefully when I strike this, or swipe it I guess, it opens up. Hooray! The application, awesome rock, uh, whatever, there's games on here. Doesn't really matter. We'll close it. Okay, so this Kindle unfortunately has been deregistered because it says My Kindle. So we can go into More. We can check the account. It says please sign in. So I don't know if they can register this or not because if it's been, if you do a factory reset on this, it will wipe out all the data on the Kindle itself, but it doesn't take the data from Amazon off. So if you don't remember what your password is or what your login information is, you'll have to go onto the website to find it. But if you've forgotten your password to get onto your Amazon website, then you might be able to phone them and they might be able to help you but from what I understand they couldn't care less they'll just either send you a new Amazon or they'll tell you to buy a new one so don't do a factory reset unless you absolutely know what your passwords are the other thing you can do instead of doing a factory reset instead of doing a factory reset in here I'll show you where the menu is go into more and you go into device there's factory reset or factory defaults they call it. If you do a factory default and you forget your password, you're basically screwed. But what you can do instead is you can go to more, and then you go to my account, and in here it'll have like Rob's Kindle written in here. You can deregister it. And what that'll do is it'll deregister this and it'll also deregister it off your Amazon account so that all the information is gone. That way you can re-register it from here and put your put a new password and email address in there. Because the factory if you do a factory reset, it leaves the information on the company's website. So if you try to re-register it and you don't have all the information right, it'll tell you that it can't be registered because some of the information is wrong. So if you have to do anything, deregister it from my account. Okay, so this is, is it ready? This is my Rob's fourth Kindle. I only actually have one right now. I just haven't taken them off of the website. Um, so like I was saying before, if you go into your settings and more, and you click on my account, deregister it from here. That way it'll deregister this tablet and it'll deregister it from Amazon account. That way you can re-register it with a different information. It'll still work. Do not, whatever you do, go down here and go into device and do a reset the factory defaults because it'll reset the Kindle but it will not reset it on the Amazon account. So if your information isn't exactly right when you re-register it, it you're, too, it's, you're done. You'll have to, I don't know, reroute it to something else, which is some of them have had to do that. Come on. So this thing is almost full of apps. It's only got... Actually, this thing is really full. They've used up every, all but 2.5 six gigabytes so we can go down to here and there's all sorts of crazy stuff that's been downloaded in here 
What I like to do is change the app storage so that I can put up to 5 gigabytes of app storage in there because I don't read books and I don't save a lot of files like mp3 files and even if I did I would only have probably 2 or 3 gigabytes anyway. So what I do is I repartition this to 3 and 3. So I have 3 gigabytes for app storage and 3 gigabytes for music and for books if I do like I want to read, I don't know, a PDF on how to fix a Kindle maybe. but one gigabyte is just not enough like this is there's not really a lot of games and stuff on here and this is practically full so there anyways I'm just gonna shut this thing down shut down digitizer works perfectly okay Okay, so make sure you put all your screws back in. There's two screws underneath here, so you'll have to gently lift this. Lift this out of the way, put two screws underneath, put two screws here. You can actually see one of the screw holes there, so one here and one underneath here. And then there's these two, and then you got these two and these two. And then this thing is never going to go anywhere. You could drop it and it's not going to do anything to it. The battery, what I use is... Um, uh, what kind of glue do I use? Rubber cement. I just run rubber cement on the inside where the other rubber cement was. I push this thing up as far as I can, plug it in. It'll be, it'll move around quite easily. You want it up as high as you can so that the battery has more room to move down because they just barely give you enough wire in here. Now, one of the things you got to watch out for is these prongs here. If you're very careful with your pry tool, you would have pried and popped these up and none of these would have broke. These are all in good shape. These are in good shape. And there will be more down the other side. These are all good. There's one missing here. This one's good, this one's good. This one's missing here. So I have a bit of a problem because these two corners are broke off. But what you can do on your cover because they'll have little hooks here that match up. I just put a little bit of um, rubber cement here. I run it down this side. Cement here and here, here and here. Run it down this side. That way when you pop this thing back on, the rubber cement will actually hold it together. But don't try and move it around for... It'll take a while for the rubber cement to set. Then you can just gently take your fingernail and scrape off any excess that's on the outside. This little piece of silicone jelly stuff goes right on there. And what that does is it transfers the heat into the case to keep the uh, keep this part of the computer chip cool. So when you pop this back together, that goes there. What you want to do is you want to do this side first because if this wire gets pinched in there, it, it could break the wire and then your speakers won't work. So I do this side first, and then I pop this side in, that side, and then I do the speakers, and then I do the back side, and that's it. So to do a Kindle repair, you're going to need some tools. You're going to need a very small screwdriver. You can pick these up for about a buck fifty. This whole kit here comes with a bunch of screwdriver bits. This was three dollars at the dollar store. You can order these replacement ports. They're about three dollars each. And that's free shipping out of China. It takes a little while to get here. If you order them out of the States, they're probably about five dollars. And they're probably charging a little, little bit of shipping on top of that because they want to make money at it. But they're actually fairly cheap if you have the patience to wait. The spudger or scraper tool I call it because that's basically what I use it for. This is like 50 cents. Uh, this plunger thing, very handy for cleaning. If you're only going to do one, chances are you could just borrow it from somebody or just fudge around with it, but these are handy. They're about $1.50. Wire brush, maybe a dollar or two. Make sure it's stainless steel though. And if you want to get really fancy, you can buy yourself one of these cheap adjustable temperature 
soldering irons. The reason why I like this one is because I have some control over the heat. I say I stress some. It doesn't get way too hot, um, but it, you, you don't know what the temperature is in between, so you kind of have to keep trying it. I had it way too hot, so now I've blued it, but I can always retin this, and it's the, the tips are important to have a small tip on there, so you can touch them little tiny connectors. If you don't want to spend 30 bucks on one of these things, I would never do it again by yourself or borrow a soldering iron. Here's your standard soldering iron. These are probably fifteen dollars. You could probably borrow one from somebody. Just make sure it's nice and clean and that you've tinned it. If you don't know how to tin it or have no idea what I'm talking about, go on the internet and look it up. It's important to have this tinned otherwise the solder won't stick on here very good. You don't want to put gobs of solder on here and if this is dirty when you go to fix your power port the impurities and contaminants and stuff from your soldering iron will go into the solder and it won't melt. It'll just sit there and look dirty and it doesn't actually melt and you, did, you don't end up with a good solder joint if you end up with a solder joint at all. It would basically be a failed repair. So all this stuff here, other than the soldering iron, you're looking at about, I don't know, max 10 bucks for this stuff, $15 for this, the port it's not really a, a real big expense but if you're going to do one Kindle and you have a soldering iron it'll probably cost you about $15 to fix it and it'll probably take about three weeks to get all your parts and good luck <laughs> so, they come in the ports come in strips like this no you can buy I, I bought a whole bunch of them you can just mm -hmm. buy one Lion.